everyone, this is George Kroos with the wonderful Allison Apsey, who is my co-author. And I would actually say kind of the organizer of what makes group principal. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. <laughs> So yeah. Allison and I actually, um, you can check out the book, What Makes a Great Principal. Um, over the next five weeks, and we're starting today, we're going to actually talk about the five pillars of education. So not only is this on my podcast, we're gonna actually going to uh, post this on the whatmakesagreatprincipal.com website. So this can be kind of a supplementary thing. So we want to just kind of keep this short, um, talk about each one of the five pillars. But before I actually get into it, just today, just because it's a special and it's the first one, um, Allison, I, I have to acknowledge, first of all, you and I become kind of besties through the process. Would you say that's fair? Uh, it's fair. Yes. <laughs> right. And Allison is absolutely amazing. Um, I met Allison years ago and I've seen her writing style and, you know, her work. And it, it is kind of interesting because one of the things I talk about in the book, that I think really, really matters to me is when you kind of like build a team, when you're talking about your vision, when you're talking about collaborating, you, you look for people who are different than you. And I'm going to be honest with you, you know this too, you and I are very different in many ways, right? We have different viewpoints. We, we still have the same focus on um, goals in, and I'm like a little bit more kind of in your face sometimes. <laughs> I don't know, maybe <laughs> you just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. So how, like, how, how did you kind of find that process of like, you know, having someone, you know, kind of very different from yourself, but I, you know, I know I benefited from Allison is one of the most optimistic people and I can be a little bit, even though people know me as someone who's kind of positive, I can, you know, I kind of can get down in the dumps and stuff. So tell me about that process of like kind of, you know, working together with someone who, you know, has very different characteristics than yourself. Is that fair to say? Uh, it is very, yeah, it is very fair to say. Now, so it's interesting too, because I think one of the most amazing things about you, George, is that you're a listener and will consider other perspectives. And I think that's, and I think I have that also. And that is how two people who are so different can work together successfully and that we're willing to consider other perspectives, even if they're like the polar opposite of what we were thinking. And then pause and say, huh, you know, how does that add to my learning or perspective? And then the other thing is like, you know, it just in building our relationship, like I am really positive and optimistic, but I'm also willing to say, pause a minute, let me tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, you'll do the same thing. You're like, no, let, let me finish this, this thought. Um, and so just like being candid and mm -hmm. honest to, with each other and reflective, I think has been a really crucial part of having like this book is so robust and amazing because of the various perspectives and at times like polar opposite perspectives that are shared. So, you know, okay. And this is a little kind of backstory. And I think it's very pertinent to what we're talking about right now. I actually think the ability to listen and to really consider other perspectives. And I'm curious of your thoughts on this is because of all of the opportunity I've had to write publicly for years, right? Like, I, like a lot of people don't consider you a writer if you only have a blog, whereas, you know, I actually think there's real power through blogging through this. I know you started blogging after um, we met at, what was it? Is it, is it Memspa? Is it, why am I mixing yeah, this up? Memspa. Memspa, yes, right? Because I know there's like a, there's the Minnesota one that you did and I'm going to be doing this coming up here, um, the principal event. But there's a really great quote and I, I'm going to mess it up a little bit, but just kind of the idea you'll get. It's Clive Thompson. He says, Anyone can win an argument inside their head, but when you have to face an audience, you have to be truly convincing. And it's one of my favorite quotes because that process. So um, there, there is a reason. So like, do you feel like kind of knowing that anybody can read your stuff, like that makes you actually more thoughtful of other per people's perspectives? Yes. Yes. I remember that. So I met you in December of 2015 and like three days later, I started a blog I pressed publish on that first blog post and I felt like completely exposed. Like nobody is reading my blog except you did. So thank you very much. <laughs> but I, I, I got to give it, you said for me reading. Oh, just wait. Yeah. Just wait but... <laughs> okay, oh, so thank you for reading. Yeah. I loved it. 
but it's so funny because over the course of so many years of writing Mm -hmm. now I like I'll write to reflect I'll throw it out there and it's I'm like filled with curiosity is anybody going to read it will it resonate with anybody will anybody push back and it's not from a place of like defensiveness it's just from a place of like openness learning and curiosity and I've only written you know 250 blog posts I can't imagine how that's been for you with more than double that time and and maybe like a hundred times more blog posts. <laughs> that was like, it's only eight more times. So eight more times <laughs> blog posts. We were just talking about this before we got on. I've written, I think over 2000 blog posts, you know, just in my own blog, let alone all the other spaces I've written over the years. And so the reason I bring this up, um, we are gonna talk about pillar one, uh, relationship builder. And I'll tell you um, the kind of quick definition, you know, that was shared in this. And then Alice and I kind of agreed, hey, I'm gonna ask her, um, like, what's one kind of thing you want to maybe expand on a little bit more? And re- she's going to reverse the question. We're going to do a little reverse Uno card uh, reflection on this as well. But the reason I actually bring up the blogging component, what we hope is people are listening to this and they don't just consume the information, but they actually, you know, maybe take this podcast. You can, you know, hear it on Apple, SoundCloud, um, Spotify. You can watch it on YouTube and maybe take a snippet of it or maybe take some of the chapter and then write your own blog post, expand on it. And, you know, use the hashtag, what makes a great principle, um, share with myself and Allison, or, you know, either or both of us, because I think that's where you really start to dig in. There's one thing when you just kind of consume information, but when you actually have to make something of it, I think that's kind of the whole premise of what makes a great principle is that we don't believe there's one path that there's so many different personalities. There's so many different opportunities but kind of making it work for who you are in your community is really important. So we encourage you to not just listen to this, but actually expand on it, share your own ideas. And I know that sounds weird. Maybe challenge some of the stuff we're saying too. I'm open to that. Maybe challenge Allison, not me, but no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Bring it on. Okay. Yeah. Alice is way better. I have a little bit, you know, a little bit. (laughs) No, we're, we're, we're kidding. Right. We, and it's not like, I'm not, maybe challenge is not the best word, but you know, maybe kind of like we, I, I'm always open to learning. I think that's that's a really important aspect and we want to learn from those we connect with. So um, before I ask Allison the question, uh, pillar one relationship builder, this is one of five. And I think the really important thing to identify, we don't say like, hey, relationship builder, if you do these 10 things, you'll be a great relationship builder. We kind of share some stories, ideas, and ultimately you have to figure out the solutions. So relationship builder is, we identify as this, Great principals understand that strong, positive relationships are foundational to the success of their school, and they are constantly looking for ways to support relationships through the environment. Effective principals model the empathy, joy, and connection need for positive relationships, sorry, relationships among staff, students, and families in the school community. They know that every interaction matters and model that every single day. So that's kind of the overview of what we talk about. So. You kind of wrote about, you know, some of the research behind this, um, some of the ideas when you wrote about like, what's one idea you want to maybe expand on that you talked about in that chapter? One of the ideas is tossing out your desk chair. And the reason for, I mean, you can still have a desk chair. This could be symbolic, but the reason for it is that as a principal, when you are not at your desk, when you're out and about in your school community, when you're out and about beyond your school walls, you are seemingly always where you need to be. Mm-hmm. And when when we talk about that, we're not just talking about like physical presence because I know a lot of principals and like guilty as charged will be around with like walkies, their cell phones, right. um, their smart watches, and they're physically out on the playground or in the professional learning session or walking into classrooms, but mentally, they're wherever that walkie is going to take them next. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about being physically there, but it's also about being engaged with the people right in front of you, being engaged in that classroom. Not that you don't have to be actively engaged, but watching what students are doing, what teachers are doing out in the playground, the conversations that you have. And we have two contributing authors. Well, we have three contributing authors for Mm. um, every one of the pillars, but I want to talk about a couple of them because in relationship builder, um, we have Taylor Tiemann, who shares her perspective as a student, as a high school student. And one of the coolest things her Burl Montgomery, I think is his name, mm-hmm. her high school principal did was they had 
um, challenges each year and the students took pictures of him out and about in the community and posted them to social media, like with his full blessing, like he encouraged them to do this. So they'd like spot him at the grocery store. They take a picture and they would post it to the school social media that they spot. And then the, the class got points for spotting him, but it was in Taylor's point is like, we saw him as a human. And he wanted to connect with us all the time. Like he, like we, we were so important to him that even if we spotted him out in the community, he wanted to connect with us. And the other thing that Taylor says is that they felt that he saw them as people and not just as students. And that takes being present with them. You know, so I know that you're going to kind of reverse uh, ask me what my takeaway is, but I'm just going to build off yours because I think that was what I was going to talk about, the importance of being present, right? And how important that is mm -hmm. in the work that we do. And, and you also touched on how we model this. And I think one of the things that is unique about this book is, you know, we, we know relationships are talked about in education. I think this is a really important point too. I think some people say like, ooh, relationships are really important and they kind of end there. And that to me is like, hey, it's a foundational thing, but you actually have to talk about learning, right? If all you talk about is relationships, but there's no improved learning, there's no improved opportunities for, you know, your, not only your, your students, but your staff, then you're just saying stuff that's really catchy and it's all nice, but it doesn't really actually improve anything in education. It's like saying, you know, like, a, hey, a business, we focus on relationships, but none of that ever turns into like increased sales or anything like that. Well, there is kind of like a bottom line and our bottom line is learning, right? Is actually ensuring that our students are continuously growing and getting better because of our presence. And so when you talk about that importance of presence, I think one of the things that I was adamant about is we always talk about relationships in schools, but we kind of ignore relationships outside of school. And not only the relationship we have with our families, with our friends, and how easily we can totally be distracted by all the stuff that happens in schools, but also the relationship with ourselves, right? And finding that time and like one strategy, um, and you know this about me, uh, I actually have no notifications on my phone, like none. I do not actually do get any text <laughs> messages. <laughs> yeah, I know I don't get phone calls, like nothing. Now I can turn that on at certain points of the day and there's like emergency, you know, um, things that actually can happen there. But the the thing for me is that I try to be where I'm at and give my best in that moment and not have my mind in school. And one of the things I've been sharing with educators, especially over the last few years, is in education, we are so good at being totally immersed and present while we're at work in our jobs. And then we go home and we're so good at being totally immersed in our work and and actually not being where we need to be. So when we talk about this idea of relationship, it's not limited to your own community, but also to outside of it. And actually, and I'm not talking about businesses. And I'm talking about like the people that, you know, when you're done your job are gonna be the ones like on, by you on your deathbed, like those people too, right? Cause like you can't get that time back. So it's, it's really important, but also taking time for yourself. You're seeing, and you know, maybe I'm biased because I, so much has changed for me in the last few years, uh, people's health just becoming terrible, like physically and mentally, because mm -hmm. they, they're so they'll, they'll always show up on time for a meeting for other people, but then they'll kind of like disregard, you know, spending some time to exercise, spending some time to read, spending some time to do this. So th when we talk about relationships, we cannot ignore the relationship outside and the relationship inside. Any, any thoughts on that, Allison? Yeah. Yeah. Actually interesting. My, one of my old superintendents, he was retiring and we had a, a gathering for his retirement. And, you know, I felt like, you know, we had a, rela a close relationship, like we were really important to him, but what he said to us was so moving to me in that he said, you know, you guys, like I value all of you. I really enjoyed working with you, but he had his family standing right next to him. He said, these are the people I'm going to spend the rest of my life with, not you. So keep that in mind as you continue I in your careers. It. Yes. And, and that was, it was profound and important for us to keep in mind um, that you know, the most important people are the ones at home. So being present and eliminating those distractions is crucial.
So I love that. And I think that's a very powerful lesson, right? Because typically at the end of our lives, at the end of our careers, that's when we get the perspective we need at the beginning, right? Uh, And so that to me, you know, to get that wisdom while you're still in your career, while you're still doing things, take that and utilize that. Don't wait till it's too late to make those connections. So um, next week, Allison and I are going to be doing uh, pillar number two. Like you're going to see us wearing the same clothes. It's not like we wear the same clothes every time. We're just recording a bunch of them right now. But <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe, maybe we do. Maybe we, I'm just saying that to kind of throw the scent off. So, which, you know, would stink if we wore the same clothes five weeks in a row. So, uh, <laughs> What, here's what we're going to do, though. Um, what I encourage you to do, uh, Alice and I talked about relationships. So here's a couple questions you can throw in the comments. I would love to know your, your thoughts because so we can kind of make this a resource. How do you build um, really rela- important relationships in your school community with your staff and students, but also what are some things you do to build the relationships you know, outside of the school community and with yourself? And what are some of your strategies that might work? Because I think what would be powerful is if people shared some of those ideas in the comments down below. We can make this a resource and we can learn from each other. So thanks, Allison, for taking the time. I'll see you next week when we're all wearing the same exact clothes. (laughs) (laughs) Can't wait. I can't wait. So thanks to everyone for listening. We will be back next week with pillar number two. It'll be on a Thursday. So thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.